Hi, my name is Knockle, and I'd like to talk a little more about Rust. Types are what makes the world go round in Rust. To a computer, data is just a series of bytes. Types are needed to tell it what the data represents. There are a variety of numerical types in Rust. First, you have U8, U16, U32, U64, and U128. The U stands for unsigned, and the number after it represents how many bits are in the number. There are also signed integers. These follow the same pattern, but with an I instead of a U. These have the same numbers of bits as their unsigned counterparts, but also allow for negative numbers. We also have I size and U size, which have the same number of bytes as the system's pointer size. There's also F32 and F64, which can hold decimals. F64 is more precision than F32, but takes up twice the space. In addition, we have bool, which stores true or false, and two string types, string slices and own strings. These string types can hold text, which is made up of cars that represent individual characters. In Rust, we declare a variable using let, the variable name, equals, the value, followed by a semicolon. For instance, let x equals 3. Where's the type, you may be asking? Is Rust dynamically typed? No, it's just that Rust is very good at inferring what type the variable is. Of course, you can manually specify the type by adding a colon, followed by the type after the identifier. You can also modify the print line macro by adding an open close curly bracket inside of the format string, then a comma, then the value of what you want to print, in order to print that value to the console. Variables can be defined in terms of other variables and, using operations, can be combined with other variables or literal values. The operations do about what you'd expect them to do, and can be combined with parentheses. Note that you can only combine two numbers of the same type in this way. Functions are units of code designed to accomplish a specific task. To define a function, you put fn, followed by the function's name, followed by an open parenthesis, followed by the arguments. Each argument consists of the argument's name, then a colon, then the argument's type. Arguments are separated by commas. If you want your function to return, make an arrow using a dash followed by a closing angle bracket, and then put the type you want your function to return. In the curly brackets with the statements, you can have as many statements as you'd like, but the final statement must be a value without a semicolon at the end. To call this function, use the function's name, followed by the values you want to pass to the function in parentheses. Finally, I think it's prudent to talk about modules. Modules are how you organize your code in Rust. We can put the foo function in its own module. Before the function, we add mod, then our module's name, and then enclose the function or functions we want to put in it in curly braces. In order to access the foo function now, we need to make sure the foo is public and then use a double colon operator. Alternatively, if, at the top of the file, we do use bar colon colon foo semicolon, this imports foo into the main module, so we don't have to use double colon syntax when we actually use it. And yes, before you ask, you can put modules inside of modules. You might ask what the point of modules are, and I'm getting to that. Let's say we create another file called bar.rs in the src directory. We move all the contents of the bar module to bar.rs and replace the original in main.rs with modbar with a semicolon at the end. This is functionally equivalent to what we had before and allows us to separate our code into multiple files. However, if you try to do the same strategy with the other module, you'll find you have an error that you can't access the baz module it's in the bar folder. What's up with that? You see, the Rust module system acts somewhat like a tree rooted in the src directory. The root is either main.rs or lib.rs depending on the program type. Each following node or module can be represented as one of two, a standalone file or a folder containing several files. The root of these folders has to be named mod.rs contain any number of other folders or files also containing modules. When we put mod baz inside of the bar folder, it tries to own the baz.rs file, but it's already logically owned by the main module, so it failed. We would need to move bar.rs to mod.rs inside of a bar folder, 
and then move baz.rs inside of that folder for this program to work. Finally, there are two special purpose modules that are available in any module. Great refers to the root module, and super refers to the module one level up. Next time, we'll talk about some of the things that make Rust so special, like mutability, ownership, and borrowing.